Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns and I'm using a Mac for the first time, but I'm still going to be able to show you how you can install Python on a Mac computer. So first step, what we'll do is we'll search for python.org. And here I'm going to download the Python version 3.13 for Mac OS. So once this gets downloading, I'm simply going to open it and then continue with the installation. So click continue, continue, agree with the license, hit next, and then type in a password, and then finish up the installation process. So you can see here that it does start to install Python for us. So now that Python is done installing, we can close out of here, and then we can move the installer to the trash. We don't need that anymore. Let's open up terminal. And here I'm going to type in Python, and or actually Python 3. And here we can see that Python 3 does open up. If I type in print hello world, you can see that it does print hello world. That means that Python is currently working on our computer, on our system. So that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and also install a Python interpreter. Now the one that I always like to use is VS Code. So let's go to VS Code and download the one for Mac OS. And then here we can see that the installation has started. So once the download completes, I can click on it. And then let me open it up as well. Here, I'm going to select open. And there we go. We can see that VS Code is also done downloading. Now here, I can do some basic setup. So I can see that I have an explorer section, a search section, uh, I also have a section for source control, for extension. So for example, if you're going to be working with Python quite a bit, you might want to install some Python extensions. So for example, we have one for Python. Uh, there's another one here for uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we can get some linters. We can get some um, pretty code, print, or anything like that. Now, something else that I also want to do is to initialize Git. So the way that I would do that is I'm going to select download Git for Mac OS. And let's open this external website. And then here we can see the two ways uh, that we can actually install or download Git. So one is if we have Homebrew and one is if you have Mac port. So let's just say that we use Homebrew. So first for that, I'm going to have to install Homebrew. And here we can see what the command looks like. So let's copy this command. Let's open up terminal. And then I'm here, I'm going to paste the command that I just copied. Here it's asking me for my password. So let me type it in. And then I'm just gonna hit enter, enter, enter a couple of times. So now that brew has done installing, it says run these commands to add homebrew to your path. So let's copy this command. And then let me paste that here. And then also there is one more, and I think it's this one. So let's copy that and paste that as well. And then it looks like we have this one over here. So let's copy that and one more paste. Now, if I type in brew help, we can see that it works. So let's go back here to see what we need to do. It says brew install git. So let's type in brew install git. And here we can see that it's already started installing git for us, which is perfect. So now that it's done installing, let's go back to VS Code. And here we might just have to restart the app. So let's close out of it. And then let's open up VS Code again. And now if I go to source control, we can see that git has already been installed. And uh, to use the Git features, we can open a folder containing a Git repository or clone from a URL. Let's open up a new folder. So I'm gonna go to documents, and then here we can just create a new folder. And let's just say I call this folder test. So let's create this folder and then open it. And then here I'm going to allow access and then trust the authors of this folder. Now over here, anything that I type, so for example, any file that I create, like a test.txt, um, and I can just say over here something like hello. Let's save this file with command S. 
If I go to this location on my documents, I will be able to see this file being populated as well. So over here, let's see if this file actually gets populated. To do that, I'm going to reveal this in Finder. And when I click that, let's open up test and we can see test.txt. So if I open up this file, we can see it says hello. Now over here from this folder, if I just delete this file, we can see that it also gets deleted on VS Code. So that's perfect. So now we can see that anything that we make over here is also gets updated in the folder. So let's go here and then let's create a new file. Let's call this um, hello-world.py. Now here I'm gonna write some simple Python code. I'm just gonna say print hello world. Now first I'm gonna save this, so command S to save the file. And then to run this file, I can just click on this run icon. And here we can see that it prints out hello world. So this code is working fine. Now let's also push this code to GitHub. The way that we would do that is going to source control. And first you'll need to initialize a empty repository. Once you do that, this is what you're going to have. Now here, we don't need to have this file included. So I can delete this file, doesn't matter. In source control, I'm just gonna say initial commit. Let's go back to the repository and just make sure everything looks good. And if I hit commit, you'll see that it's not actually going to commit to a GitHub repository. And that is because we haven't configured our GitHub yet. So I can click always and it says, look, you need to configure your username and user email. So let's do that. Now to get an username and user email, I'll first have to create an account on GitHub. So to let's go to github.com. And then here I'm going to sign up and create an account. So I have created an account here and uh, the username is prop patterns three, two, one. So now what I need to do is go back to VS code. And over here, I need to configure my username as well as my email. So first I'm going to just type in git to see if git's running, git's working, that's perfect. So first let's type in git config global hyphen hyphen global user.name and then space. And then here I'm going to type in prof patterns three, two, one. Then I'm going to say git config hyphen hyphen global user.email. And then here I'm going to say whatever email that I use to sign up. So prof patterns at gmail.com. And now let's go hit commit again and publish this branch. Here it's going to ask me to, if I'm allowing it to use GitHub, I'm going to say sure. And also authorize Visual Studio Code and always allow. So here I'm going to say publish this to a public repository. And then here it said it successfully was able to publish it to this repository. So if I open this up on GitHub, you can see here that this code does exist on GitHub, right? Print hello world. So let's go back to VS Code. Now over here, let's go to the file that I created, hello world. Now here, suppose that I was to create a new line and just say something like print, this is professor patterns. Now, as soon as I hit command S to save this file, you'll notice that source control uh, said that, look, there's a new file update. And it automatically, if I click here, we can see what the changes were from the original file and the new file. So now I can say, added a new line in hello world. And if I hit commit, look how easy it is now to commit this to a GitHub repository. I don't need to go through all of those settings anymore because everything has been configured. So now if I go back over to GitHub and refresh this page, we should now be able to see the new line of code. So this is basically the workflow that you'd want to establish when you're working with Git. So in this video, I showed you first how you can install Python, how you can install VS Code, and also how you can connect your Git to your VS Code account. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.